How are you, my friends? This video is presenting seven old exams questions related to inverse functions. These questions are coming from pre-calculus course lecture number one. Let's see question number one. Which of the following functions is one-to-one -one and which are not one-to-one? -one? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six parts we can see number two is uh, one to one because this is x to the power four plus five we have a condition between see we have a condition here between zero and two closed so the graph without condition is not one to one if you draw a horizontal line test you see but from zero to two only this part of the function so that will be one to one. Also number three, we have three plus x power half, which means the square root of three plus x plus two. So that's half of the parabola shifted to the left three units and up two units, it's one to one. Now not one to one, we have number one, number four, number five and number six. And these are the reason if you get two values for the x, different values for the x like one and minus one, you replace it there, you get the same y. So two values for the x, they have the same image, not one to one, absolute value, not one to one, x cubed minus x, you can graph it and use horizontal line test, not one to one. The function one over x squared, you can choose three and minus three or any numbers you like, different values for the x, you get the same y. So not one to one. Question number two, we have a function f of x cube root of x minus eight minus three, a graph the function and its inverse, where the graph of the inverse is above the x-axis. Now, if you look at the solution of question number two, we see the function cube root of x minus eight minus three, cube root function shifted to the right eight units, and then shifted down three, we know the graph is the black one. So we can find the inverse by using the four steps replace f of x by y, interchange x and y, solve for y, so we'll get the inverse x plus three cubed plus eight. This is the inverse. Now here I picked up only one point. If I put seven in the function f here, I get minus four. So we see that point here, just, just to compare it. If you interchange x and y, so minus four and seven will be exactly on the graph of the inverse. Now the question says, where the graph of the inverse is above the x. See this part here is above the x. All this is above the x. So we have to get this point. This point is the x-intercept of the inverse, which is the same as the y-intercept of the function. If you find x-intercept of uh, f inverse, you go to f inverse, you put y equals zero, you will get x minus five. Easier, if you take y intercept of f, put x equals zero there, you get the same value, y will be minus five. So y minus five is there, x minus five is there. Where the graph of the inverse above the x? From this number here, minus five until infinity. Question number three, we have a function g, three x plus two, and we have also g of x is equal to two times the inverse of the f. And now f inverse is the inverse of this function ax plus b. Find the value of a times b. Since I have the function f is equal to ax plus b, I can find the inverse. So I can start by finding the inverse, interchange, you see put here y is equal to ax plus b, interchange x is equal to ay plus b, solve for y, so it will be x minus b over a, that's the inverse, you see f inverse, and here multiply it by two, because that's given here, multiply it by two, so just multiply that, the inverse, two times the inverse, so this two x over a minus two b over a, that's the two times the inverse, which is the same as g given. So now we can write g three x plus two is equal to this one here, two x over a plus minus two b over a. Now we have an equation here. See, we have an x and x, we have constant and constant. So on the, on the next slide now we will see 
this coefficient here, three, is the same as the coefficient two over a. And this coefficient two is equal to the coefficient minus two b over a. Let's see. So for the above equation to be true, we take the three is equal to over a. See that one, the coefficient of the x is equal to the coefficient of the x. So a will be two over three, leave it. Now take the constant here, two is equal to minus two b over the a. So a will be minus b or b will be minus a, same. Because we need b, so b minus two over three because already a is two over three. When you multiply them, you get minus four over nine. This is a nice question. We have a function rational mx minus two divided by four minus five x. Find the value of m if f inverse of minus 23 is equal to one. So we need the value of the m. After that, we need the domain of the inverse. Let's take f inverse of minus 23 is equal to one. Let's call it a point E. See, it's a point E where the X is minus 23 and Y is one. This is on the inverse, it says there. So point E lies on the graph of the inverse. Then point A lies on the graph of the function F. And A now is one, you interchange X and Y, remember? One minus 23 belongs to F. So that's X and that's Y. So I can take X is one and replace it in the function F one and see x and x here x and x and the y is minus 23. Simplify cross multiply you will get m equals 25. So now we have the function 25 x minus 2 over 4 minus 5 x. Use the very important note so this is n2. We need to find the domain of the inverse which is the range of the f. Remember this function from the algebra course lecture 39 the last lecture in the algebra course that's a rational function so when you graph it you get a horizontal asymptote there 25 over minus 5 which is y equals minus 5 see 25 over minus 5 so the range becomes all the real numbers except the horizontal asymptotes so all real numbers except minus 5 or we can write it minus infinity to minus five union, minus five to infinity. That's important, but normal question, not difficult. Given the two functions, f of x and g of x, find g inverse circle f inverse of minus four plus f circle f inverse of 27. See the difference between these two parts. This is the same function here. So we can use cancellation properties in the pre-calculus course, lecture number one. And this one, no cancellation properties. We have to find the inverse of F, we have to find the inverse of G, and then replace minus four in F inverse. So the function F is a straight line. Let's find the inverse, Y equals one over eight X minus three, interchange. We know the story, find Y, this is F inverse. Now let's find the inverse of G. G is X cubed. So the same idea, put y in the function, interchange x and y, solve for y. So g inverse will be cube root of the x. Now we know f circle f inverse of 27 is equal to 27. And here I replace minus four in the f inverse there. See minus four minus 32 plus eight, I get minus eight. Replace minus eight in the g inverse cube root of minus eight is minus two plus 27 is equal 25. This is a parabola, question number six. F of X is minus X squared minus four X plus 12. And we have a condition. See, without the condition, we cannot do this question because this is a parabola, not one-to-one. -one. Since we have a condition, it would be one-to-one. -one. So graph the function and its inverse and where the graph of the inverse is below the x axis. So let's take this one. The function is not in standard form, so we can use the lecture 34 in the algebra course, which is h and k. h will be minus b over 2a, k will be f of h. I think you remember that. 
and then we have to put it in the standard form. There is another way you can use completing the square to find the function in standard form. This is the standard form here. But remember, in the completing the square, the coefficient of the x squared should be one. So I take a minus. See, I leave the 12 there, leave the 12, take a minus from the first two terms. So it becomes x squared plus four x. Now inside the bracket, I complete the square. So take four, which is the coefficient of the x, divide by two and square it. So you get plus four minus four, then you continue, you will reach to this standard. So this is a parabola reflected in the x-axis, shifted um, two units on the left and 16 units up. So this is the, the graph here. If you need the domain of the f, it's exactly the condition. x greater than or equal to minus two, so it will start from minus two to infinity. Now let's find the inverse. So this is the graph of the f. To find the inverse, use the four steps. Put f of x is y, interchange, take the square root of both sides. We get two functions here. We have to choose one, only one. f inverse minus two plus or minus square root of minus x plus 16. So either the plus here in the middle here, not this minus, in the middle, either the minus two plus something or minus two minus something. So you have to choose. How do you choose on the next slide? Here, just to remind you that the domain of the F is the condition and the range you can find from minus infinity until K, which is 16. So the way to choose, you can just pick any point on the function F. See the function F here. If I take three, put, put there three, three plus two, five squared minus 25 plus 16 is minus nine. So that's a point there here, three minus nine, it's exactly there. So if you interchange x and y, minus nine, three in the inverse. So I can take the positive, the function with the positive, and then the function with the negative. And then I can check the, the point minus nine, three. If I put here three on the y, see three on the y, in the x here I put minus nine, also three in the y, in the x I put minus nine. Three is equal minus seven, that's false. Three equals to three is correct, so this is the inverse. So now the inverse is minus two plus square root of minus x plus 16. Now, see this is the graph of the inverse and this is the graph of the f. And you know the, these are nodes, the domain of the inverse is the range of the f and the range of the inverse is the domain of the f. Now the, the question says, question says, where the graph of the inverse is below the x-axis. See the graph of the inverse here, the red here below the x here, this part, you see? So we need to zoom in. If you zoom in here, see this is the graph of the inverse. If you zoom in, you will see from 12 until 16. Below, below means open at 12, 16 close. That's the answer. So the x-intercept of the inverse see the x is the, the same as the y-intercept of the function. So the graph of the inverse is below the x here, you can see it. It's not easy to see here, you can see it here. 12 open until 16 close. This is all below the x-axis. Now find the inverse of the following functions. We have done many questions, I'll go here very fast. One, two, three, four, that's cubic. This is a square root, rational, and this is a parabola with the condition. So you can find the answers there. I put this slide from the lecture itself, lecture number one, that's a simple example. Just to remind you of the four steps, replace f of x by y, interchange x and y, solve for y, put the inverse is equal y. Now, if we look at the uh, solution of the first two parts of question number seven, we can use the previous slide. So we have f of x is equal x cubed minus two, put f of x y, interchange x and y, solve for y, we get the inverse cube root of x plus two. Second one, we have f of x square root of x minus three. This is the graph only of the function f 
half parabola shifted to the right three units. Uh, put y for f of x, etc. We get we get here parabola y equal x squared plus three. See that's the inverse. But but we have to write a condition here. See the range here of the f from zero up to infinity. It will be the domain. So we cannot take the whole parabola. This x squared plus three shifted up three units. If you take the whole parabola, it's not one to one. So that's not the inverse. Not one to one. See, this is not one to one. So the one to one only this part. Why this part? X greater than or equal to zero. Not that part, because this part here in the domain x greater than or equal to zero, which will be the range of this. All right. So we cannot take this part. Number three. Uh, the steps also use the four steps. This is a rational function. Easy. Put y instead of f of x. Uh, interchange x and y, so we get y will be 2x minus 10 over 3x, that's the inverse. This one is a parabola, we have a condition x less than or equal to 5, so from minus infinity until 5. We did many examples like that. Put f of x is y, interchange x and y, so y will be uh, 5 plus or minus square root of x. So you have this one or this one you have to check. So you can graph it and see the domain of the f here will be the range of the inverse, which is this one here. So this range from five to infinity, this range minus infinity to five. So that will be the inverse here, the red one, minus square root of x plus five. Now these are the answers of the same question. If you need to see more examples, please you can see the video on pre-calculus course, lecture number one inverse functions. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another lecture with another topic. Thank you very much again. Bye.